Sri Lanka, known as the Pearl of the East from ancient times, is a 65,000 square kilometer island in the Indian Ocean, just below the southern tip of India. It has a recorded history of over 2,500 years and definite evidence of forms of governance from the 3rd century BC since the Andhradapura period. Ancient Sri Lanka was a monarchy and the head of state was the king. He was also entrusted with the legislative functions. The king had a court of ministers to represent the interest of the people and to advise him. King Pandukabya made Anuradhapura a fairly modern city, the first capital of Sri Lanka in the 4th century BC. The forerunner of the parliament, the royal court, met in the evenings to manage municipal matters under an official called Nagara Guttika. During the 5th century AD, the royal court met in a special place presided over by the king. Ruins of an ancient royal court is visible even today at Sigiri. During the Polon Naru period, a special decorative building was constructed by King Parakrambahu for the meetings of the royal court. King Nisankamal, who followed him, built his own royal court. close to the waters of Parakrama Samudra. This tradition was followed even in the last Singhala kingdom, Kandy, where an artificial lake was created close to the city. After the rule of Singhala kings, the maritime districts fell to the Portuguese in 1505 AD. Then came the Dutch in 1602 AD. And with the signing of the Kandyan Convention in 1815 AD, Sri Lanka became a British colony. However, just three years later, the British administration was disrupted due to rebellion by the Sinhalese. As a result, the Colbrook Commission was appointed in 1833 to introduce reforms. On its recommendations, the two separate councils, the Executive Council and the Legislative Council were formed. Initially, both the Legislative Council and the Executive Council met at the building now occupied by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in front of Gordon Gardens in Kalamba Fort. In 1912, the number of members in the Legislative Council increased to 21. Again in 1921 and in 1924, this number further increased to 37 and 49 respectively. On the recommendations of the Dunamo Commission, Universal Adult Franchise was introduced to everyone over the age of 21 in 1931. The Legislative Council was renamed as the State Council, which consisted of 61 members. A land close to Goldface was selected for a new spacious building for the parliament and the architect was Woodson. The new building for the state council was ceremonially declared open by Sir Herbert Stanley on the 29th of January 1930. Sir Stanley in his address said that he believed that the people would protect the independence and the dignity of that building. The Solbury Commission appointed in 1944 recommended a number of reforms in 1946 based on the Westminster model. Accordingly, the Parliament consisted of the Senate or the Upper House and the House of Representatives or the Lower House. The Senate had 30 members and the House of Representatives had 101 members of which 95 were elected members and the six were nominated by the Governor General. The Prime Minister and the Cabinet were answerable to the lower house. On 4th February 1948, 
Sri Lanka attained independence with dominion status. The head of the state was the Governor General, representing the Queen, Right Honourable D. A. Sena Nayaka. From 1948 to date, the Right Honourable D. S. Sena Nayaka, Honourable Dudley Sena Nayaka, Sir John Kotalawala, Honourable S. W. R. D. Bandar Nayaka, Dr. Vijayananda Dahanayaka, Honourable Mrs. Srimao Bandar Nayaka, Honourable J. R. Jayawadana, Honourable R. Premadasa, Honourable D. B. Vijay Tunga, Honourable Ranil Vikrama Singh, Honourable Mrs. Chandrika Bandar Nayaka Kumar Tunga, Honourable Ratna Siri Vikrama Nayaka, Honourable Mahindra Rajapaksha, and Honourable D. M. Jayaratna have served as Prime Ministers while the present Prime Minister is Honourable Ranil Vikrama Singh. Out of the former Prime Ministers, Honourable J. R. Jayawadana, Honourable R. Premadasa, Honourable D. B. Vijay Tunga, Honourable Mrs. Chandrika Bandar Nayak Kumar Tunga, and Honourable Mahindra Rajapaksha were later elected as Executive Presidents. His Excellency Maitripala Sirisena is the present Executive President. Prior to the introduction of the Presidency, Sir Oliver Gunatilaka and Honourable William Gopalava served as Governors General of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka became a republic on the 22nd of May 1972 with the adoption of a new constitution. This constitution provided for a unicameral legislature named the National State Assembly, which consisted of 168 elected members. On the 7th September 1978, the Second Republican Constitution of Sri Lanka the Constitution of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka was enacted. The significant features of this constitution were the introduction of the proportional representation system and the executive presidency. The number of representatives rose to 225, out of which 29 were appointed from the national list of members. The Parliament is the supreme legislative authority of the country, which has a lifespan of five years. The Parliament can be summoned or prorogued by a proclamation by the President. The main functions of Parliament are enactment of legislation, supervision of the executive and control of public finance. Ventilation for public grievances is carried out through public petitions and questions in Parliament and the control of public finance is carried out through the Public Accounts Committee and the Committee on Public Enterprises. As the Parliament building at Golface was inadequate, in 1979, the House permitted the building of a new Parliament complex in Sri Jawardhanapura Korte. The Korte Kingdom, which was founded by the King Nisanka Alakeshwara, or Nisanka Alagakonara in the 14th century was made the capital, later by another distinguished king, Parakrambahu VI. Kote abode the sacred tooth relic during this period. Kote is the famous and scenic city described in the chronicle Salalihini Sandeshe, written by Venerable Totagamue Sri Rahulatera during that era. The new parliament at Sri Jawadhanapura Korte was ceremonially declared open on the 29th of April 1982 and it is the third building after the Legislative Council was established in 1833. With the opening of the new parliament, Sri Jawadhanapura Korte became the administrative capital of Sri Lanka. The new parliament located on a 16-acre island in the historical Diawanna Lake, 15 kilometers eastward from the city of Colombo was designed by the famous architect Geoffrey Bava. Under the standing orders, parliament meets on two alternate weeks after the first and the third Sunday of each month, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays. The national flag is flown at full mast 
on the second floor of the parliament building facing the ceremonial drive to signify that parliament is sitting. If the meeting goes on beyond 6.30 pm, a lantern, amber in color, atop the flagstaff shines in place of the national flag to indicate that the parliament is still at work. The parliament building, covering an area of over 48,000 square meters, reflects the historic building tradition, Panchavasa or the five-fold historic buildings of Sri Lanka. Its doorways from all sides have unique, beautiful displays of art depicting the country's art and sculpture. The entrance to the building is through a clump of ironwood trees. Ironwood or Na is the national tree of Sri Lanka. Immediately afterwards, one comes across the large ornamental pond filled with manal or blue lotus which is the national flower. Beyond this pond is the entrance of the foyer that leads to the chamber. Beyond the foyer is a special ceremonial area of the parliament. On either side of the foyer are two large ornamental belts which were gifted to parliament by Mitsui Construction Company of Japan. The ceiling of the foyer has been decorated with a colourful tile designed by the famous artist Mrs. Ina de Silva. Across the veranda in the centre is a large bronze sliding door and behind this door is a pair of gates made of iron and silver. These gates lead to a rectangular lobby. Three flights of stairs from this lobby lead to the door of the main chamber. The walls between the main door and the entrance to the chamber is covered with exquisite murals by the renowned artist Dr. Manju Sri. These are unique, traditional paintings depicting the gods and goddesses as mentioned in the episode Salalihin Sandeshya. At the top of the flight of steps is the beautiful, elegantly embellished door of the main chamber made of silver and copper. Inscribed on the door of the chamber is the preamble to the constitution of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka in Sinhala, in Tamil and in English. This has been done in a style similar to ancient stone inscriptions. This masterpiece has been done by the metal sculptor Vimal Surendra. A unique painting by the well-known artist Senaka Sena Nayaka adorns the entrance of the speaker's gallery. The member's entrance on the east is adorned by a mural carved in mahogany by Mahinda Abe Sekara that depicts a Silvan scene. The staff entrance situated on the west is adorned by a mural depicting a marsh done by Anil Gamini Jayasurya. These two entrances lead to one corridor, the walls of which are lined with photographs of past and present members of parliament. The chamber, the centerpiece of the entire building on which meticulous care has been lavished is a gorgeous and a place of arresting beauty. It is rectangular in shape and occupies the height of two floors. The chamber is adorned with 18 silver flags, banners and standards of kings, temples and corales on ornamental stainless steel post and a seven foot tall insignia of Sri Lanka on a hollow above the chamber gives it dignity. A magnificent giant chandelier of beaten copper, plated in silver, hanging from the center of the roof directly beneath the suspended coffered ceiling gives an oriental ambience. This dazzling spectacle was designed and constructed by Lucky Senanayaka. At the southern end of the chair and placed at the centre is the speaker's chair. The first speaker's chair is a gift from the British House of Commons and is fashioned from pure English oak, reported to be over 200 years old. It is made from a part of beam of the House of Commons, dislodged when it was partly destroyed during the Second World War. The chair which is 6 feet in height is upholstered in deep maroon and the single lion with the drawn sword is embossed in gold on the leather under the head of the chair. The speaker derives his powers from the constitution, the standing orders, the parliament, powers and privileges act and conventions and practices of parliament. He presides at the meetings of the parliament 
and is responsible for the observance of rules of order. He represents the supremacy of parliament. The office of speaker is prestigious and is of great importance. The speaker is ranked third in the order of precedence, next to prime minister who comes immediately after the president. According to the standing orders, the speaker, the deputy speaker and the deputy chairman of committees are elected by the members. The outstanding qualities of the speakership are independence and impartiality. The speaker is also responsible for the management of the parliamentary estate. The speaker is elected by the house at its first meeting following a general election. In the absence of the speaker, the deputy speaker and in the absence of the deputy speaker, the deputy chairman of committees will preside. There is a chairman's panel that assists the presiding officers. Below the speaker's chair are the chairs of the secretary general, the deputy secretary general and the assistant secretaries general. The secretary general is the advisor to the speaker in matters relating to the exercise of all powers and functions of the speaker. He or one of his deputies has to be present in the chamber during the sittings of the house. The secretary general has to hold the balance between the government and the opposition and he must also enjoy the confidence of both sides. His advice is available to all members irrespective of party affiliations and such advice is comprehensive, frank and impartial. Beyond the bar of the house on either side sits the sergeant at arms who carries the mace. When the speaker enters the chamber and his deputy, the sergeant at arms is responsible for the maintenance of order within the premises and performs ceremonial function. He is privileged to be allowed to wear a sword to indicate his authority to defend the speaker and the members of parliament. To the right of the speaker are seats allocated to members of the governing party. On the left are the seats that belong to the opposition. The seating capacity is for 232 members with 166 seats on either side. The first two rows of seats on right hand side of the speaker are reserved for the cabinet ministers. The eighth seat in the front row is reserved for the president while the seventh seat is occupied by the prime minister. The leader of the opposition sits directly opposite the president. Just above the steps leading to the chamber from the main entrance is a rectangular nickel band placed across the red carpeted floor of the well of the this marks the bar of the house. The face of the bar is engraved with intricate designs traditionally symbolic of intrepidity, perpetuity and prosperity. No one other than an elected representative is allowed to cross this bar except the Secretary General staff who are attached to the chamber. In the upper part of the chamber is a raised gallery for the public with a seating capacity of 600 persons and with standing accommodation for many more. Immediately opposite the speaker's chair is the speaker's gallery. This gallery is reserved for privileged visitors. The press is accommodated in the gallery above the speaker's chair. The quorum bells, which ring out like the singing of a salalihinia or grackle, are fixed in various parts of the building and are activated before the sitting of parliament. Parliamentary sittings commence with the arrival of the speaker. The sergeant at arms leads the way carrying the maze, followed by the deputy sergeant at arms. As soon as the speaker enters the chamber, the deputy sergeant at arms announces the speaker's arrival. A procession made up of the secretary general, his deputies and the speaker make their way through the chamber. The speaker occupies a special chair kept at a higher elevation. When parliament is in session, the maze is kept on the upper bracket of the table of the house. 
The mace, which is the symbol of authority of parliament, was gifted to Ceylon House of Representatives in 1949 by the British House of Commons. The mace is made of a staff of ebony with ornamentation in silver, 18 karat gold and sapphires. When the house is in the committee stage, the mace is kept on the lower bracket of the table. It is the sergeant at arms who is the custodian of the maze and he maintains the discipline in the house. The business of parliament is conducted according to the standing orders of the parliament in the following order. A new member should be sworn in or affirmed before the speaker after which his name is entered in the register and he is allocated a seat according to his seniority in parliament. Messages from the President on important public matters, announcements related to the certification of bills and so on are then read out in the House by the Speaker. Presentation of papers and reports from committees are done by the relevant Minister or Deputy Minister. A major portion of the work related to the passage of bills is done by the relevant committees. Committees have been established under the standing orders. A committee can summon experts and any other relevant person to assist the committee to arrive at their decisions. Many different committees can function at the same time, whereas in the main chamber, only one matter could be taken up at a particular time. The Parliament of Sri Lanka has three types of committees, namely select committees, sectoral oversight committees and committees for special purposes. The Public Petitions Committee enables the citizens to bring to the notice of Parliament and seek redress of an infringement of a fundamental right or other injustice by the public officer. Question time of Parliament is very exciting. Questions are notified beforehand and are included in the order paper to be answered by the relevant minister. Usually about 15 oral questions are listed per day. By convention, Parliament always passes votes of condolences on the demise of its former members. Ministers are entitled to make statements on subjects that come within their ministerial responsibility. Any member against whom criticism or comments of personal nature have been levelled is entitled to make a personal explanation even though there is no motion before the House. Parliamentary privileges are those attached to Parliament in order to enable it to function freely, effectively and independently without obstruction. Right to speak in the House is a privilege of paramount importance. Thereafter, public business is taken up. Public business means the orders of the day and motions. This includes bills, motions for passage of regulations, supplementary estimates and so on. The constitution vests in parliament the primary legislative power to make laws including laws with retrospective effect and the laws that could repeal, add or amend any provision of the constitution. All legislative proposals have to be introduced in parliament in the form of bills. There are different procedures for the passage of government bills and private members' bills. A government bill can only be presented by a minister of the cabinet or a deputy minister. Their formulation is originated in a government ministry or department and is then referred to the legal draftsman for the preparation of the official draft bill. It is the responsibility of the Attorney General to examine every bill for any contravention of the constitutional provisions. The draft bill along with his opinion is then forwarded to the Cabinet of Ministers. Upon receipt of the Cabinet approval, the bill is ready to be published in the Gazette and referred to Parliament for enactment. After the first reading of the bill, It is referred to the relevant sectoral oversight committee. 
Its report is then presented to Parliament. The second reading of the bill is the main debate where the members express their views on the subject. The second reading debate would encompass wide-ranging discussions on the principles and the scope of the bill. Following the vote in the second reading, a bill is referred to the committee of the whole house. The third reading of the bill is for the approval of the overall content of the bill with the committee stage amendments. Basic rules relating to the debating in parliament is that a member who wishes to speak should do so by standing and addressing the chair. He can only be interrupted if he gives way. However, he is bound to give way if a point of order is raised. The honorable speaker has the power to expunge from the handset any unparliamentary words used in the house. The parliament has a well-equipped library which is exclusively for the use of members of parliament. The stock held by the library includes books, periodicals, newspapers and reference material in subjects such as law, political science, history, economics, sociology and so on. The monograph collection in the library is nearly 30,000 parliamentary debates or handsets, legal enactments, acts and bills of Sri Lanka, government gazettes, parliamentary series, sessional papers, administrative reports and annual reports are some of the documents in the preserved collection. It also has a wide collection of valuable, rare books, documents and oaths and affirmation papers of members of parliament. The library is automated and is equipped with communication devices and internet facilities. The parliament is also equipped with a medical center that provides services to the members of parliament. Parliament staff and the staff of ancillary services. Parliamentary business is recorded in the Hansard, which reproduces accurate proceedings of the house. The speeches made in the house are recorded in the Hansard in the language in which they have been delivered. Speeches are also recorded on audio and on DVD. The business of parliament is conducted in Sinhala, Tamil and in English languages and simultaneous interpretation is available during debates in all three languages. Members of parliament have the option to select the language of their choice which can be heard over the headphone and this is an indispensable service of the house. There are many colourful ceremonies attached to the parliament. The most colourful is the inauguration of a new session of parliament by the president. Another colourful event in parliament is the presentation of the budget speech. Addresses to parliamentarians by visiting dignitaries are also special events in parliament. The parliament website is www.parliament.lk. This site provides relevant information to the general public on members of parliament, the secretariat and parliamentary procedure.